This is an example of the first order transient scheme in Circuit Tutor for level one. So let's go into the first order transients game. And there is an introductory tutorial, which I would recommend strongly that you uh, take a look at on the website um, to basically familiar, familiarize yourself with the ideas behind um, this game. For right now, I'm gonna skip that. And let's go into an easy problem. This is going to be the type that involves an inductor. So this is what I call problem type one. So in this game, we need to carry out a series of analysis uh, steps at different times. Um, so we need to first analyze at zero minus, which means just before that switch is actuated. Notice this is, of course, a switched circuit in order to induce a transient. So the switch is going to close at time t equals zero. That's what that means. And just before t equals zero, the circuit should be in steady state. And that's an essential thing to do to be able to predict the uh, initial conditions at t equals zero plus. And so after doing this analysis, then we'll do the t equals zero plus analysis. We'll also need to find the Thevenin equivalent resistance seen from the terminals of the reactive element, in this case, the inductor, for t greater than zero, because that determines the time constant of the circuit, which comes into the expression for the transient, which is what we're trying to derive here. And we'll also need to analyze the circuit at t equals to infinity, um, because the circuit will then, again, be in steady state. That will allow us to determine the uh, basically particular solution of the differential equation that governs this first order transient circuit. And we'll need that in order to complete the uh, final analysis. And at any time, we can uh, choose help here. So right now, I'm going to begin by analyzing. And generally, you want to do these analysis um, sort of in chronological order, starting at 0 minus, then 0 plus, and then these other two steps finally. So I'm going to begin uh, going essentially left to right here at 0 minus. So it gives me some instructions there. It's changed the labeling on the circuit to correspond to time uh, t equals zero minus. And it basically tells me that I have to reconfigure the circuit first, which is what I have to do in every, each of these uh, analysis steps. And then I'm gonna basically go into the, uh, uh, and write the equations that are necessary and maybe simplify it. Okay, so let's reconfigure the circuit, which is always the first thing we do here. So by reconfiguring the circuit, this is basically a new mode um, of the circuit editor that you will not have used probably in other tutorials, but it basically um, allows you to change switches to shorts or opens as appropriate and change the uh, reactive element to something uh, more appropriate for the analysis at that particular time. Um, there is a help uh, uh, file available for the reconfiguration mode, uh, which will normally pop up the first time you do it, and that basically explains how you can work in this mode if you have any questions about that. So as I said, the first thing I need to do here um, is to change the switch into something more concrete. So because we're at zero minus, that means the instant before the switch is thrown, that means that it's still open since it's open initially and closing. So we're gonna basically delete that switch or change it to an open circuit. I can either right click on it like that and delete it here um, or I could just delete it with a keyboard, or I could hit this delete key. Any of those things will work. So I just used the delete key there. Um, secondly, again, I want to change this reactive element to be something more appropriate at this particular uh, time at zero minus. And because I know the circuit is in steady state, um, basically that means that because V equals L di dt for an inductor in passive sign convention, if I'm in steady state, the di dt must obviously be zero. Nothing can be changing if we're in steady state. And any transient that existed you know, a long time ago will have died out since we've left that switch in the same position for a long time. That's always the assumption in these problems. So since we're in steady state, the voltage therefore must be zero since di dt is zero. And the element with zero voltage is of course a short circuit. So I'm gonna change that to a short circuit by selecting it there as I did, turn it red, and then I'll click on the short circuit button or I could have also right-clicked, um, well, I can't do it now, but I could have right-clicked and basically changed it to a short there. And that's been, uh, the labeling is then preserved. That's the current that I'm trying to find now. So basically that's all I need to do. I cannot do any simplification or any further steps on the circuit in this mode of the circuit editor because I'm still in the reconfiguration mode. So I just click done reconfiguring. If I had made a mistake there, there was a restore circuit button that you can always use to go back to the beginning of that uh, process basically, but I didn't need to do that there. Okay, um, now 
if we observe the there's only one source that could possibly drive this current and we notice that it's actually dangling meaning it's only connected on one end therefore it can't supply any current or power to this circuit so really this circuit has nothing to power it and therefore we know that all voltages and currents in the circuit um, other than that just across this source have to be zero so that's really a very trivial thing to analyze um, unfortunately I'm going to have to go through a little bit of uh, process here um, to be able to enter that into circuit tutor though so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go simplify the circuit and I'm going to simplify it quite a lot here first of all I'm going to remove the dangling elements because those have no role to play and I just click on that and again there's of course always the help menu if I want to see again how to uh, do this uh, simplification I can also do source transformations if necessary um, in this mode, but I don't need to do that, of course, here because that source is now gone. Um, and here you might notice, well, you might say, oh, those are in parallel, but a more uh, perhaps important observation is that both of those resistors are actually shorted because there's a single node connecting both sides of those. I only have one node actually left in this circuit. Therefore, they're shorted. I may as well delete them. And you say, well, that's not going to leave much of a circuit, which is true, um, but that's actually okay as far as circuit tutor is concerned it doesn't mind if you basically don't have a complete circuit left because after all it wasn't a complete circuit to begin with so it allows me to do that and now I can exit the circuit editor with something very trivial left and uh, now I can analyze this however I want I can call it a, a, a single node pair except it's actually not a single node pair because it uh, um, it actually has only one node so it's actually, I'm going to have to select single loop here. Um, it's just a little quirk in the system because it expects you to have two nodes and here we only have one. Um, and then I can just go into that SOP branch current and clearly that has to be zero because there's nothing to drive it. So I just say that it's equal to zero. Um, you can't use this term to enter a zero because that's expected to be a non-zero value. That's why we have a separate zero term here. So just you click on this one instead of uh, that one. And <clears throat> we'll check the equation. That is correct, and basically that's all we needed to do there. So we'll click No More Equations, and now it's just writing a nice little summary here for me of what I've done so far, which is basically to determine that the inductor current at zero minus was equal to zero amperes. Okay, so the next step I want to do is to try to analyze the circuit at zero plus. But if we think about it, that's actually very trivial to do in this case because of the fact that the SOT current is that of an inductor. And one of the things we can remember about inductors is they really don't like to have their current change suddenly. And the reason, again, is that V equals L di dt formula that governs inductors. If I were to change the current suddenly, my di dt would actually be infinite, right? It would be, if it's discontinuous, that is. And we can't have, and that would mean the voltage is infinite, which is not allowed. So therefore, really, we cannot change the current suddenly of an inductor. So you know, zero minus is just one instant before t equals zero, and zero plus is one instant after. So that's basically, um, you can't have any change in that infinitesimal uh, change between zero minus and zero plus. So really, to find the SOT value at zero plus, it's gonna be very simple. I'm just gonna tell the system, um, it's gonna ask me what the number is, and I'm just gonna say, well, it's the same as it was at zero minus, because that's the only thing that it could be. So I just put in a zero here, no units. And it tells me that that's correct. And then again, the summary will now be updated to show that I've done the work, uh, even though it was very little work, at zero plus. So it's always nice when the work is very simple. Okay, now let's go and analyze at infinity. I mean, I could do either of these steps, but let's just do this one. And again, it's kind of changed the labeling on the circuit to uh, show that I'm trying to find that current now at uh, the time t equals infinity. Um, so again, it gives me the instructions on what to do, and as always, the first thing is just to reconfigure the circuit, and then I have to basically uh, either simplify and, and solve the circuit at that time. Okay, so I'll just, again, click that Reconfigure Circuit button. And once again, um, I'm not allowed to simplify in this mode. It's just a special uh, mode of the circuit editor that's dedicated to reconfiguring the circuit. So again, that means to, for example, change the switch. And again, if you don't remember what you can do here, the help key will help you uh, get information about that real quick. So because we're now at t equals infinity, that's obviously t greater than zero, much greater than zero. So therefore, this switch will be closed. So now, instead of a short, this is going, I'm sorry, instead of an open circuit as it was at zero minus, it's now going to be a short circuit. So I can either right click and change it to a uh, 
a short like that. Um, in fact, I'll just do that. Or I could have clicked over here on the short. Um, either way will work. So I've changed that to a short. And now the inductor, the reactive element, we're going to change that to something else as well so that we can do the analysis. Um, and what we know is that t equals infinity, since we've had lots of time with the switch in the newly closed position, that any transient that existed will have died out, provided this is a stable circuit. And any circuit that doesn't have dependent sources basically has to be a stable circuit, so we don't need to really worry too much about that. So since we're going to be in steady state, basically um, what that means is that, uh, again, because V equals L di dt, um, if you're in steady state, d dt of anything has to be zero, right? Because nothing can change in steady state by definition, so di dt has to be zero, which means that the voltage must be zero. You say, what circuit element has zero voltage? Well, that's easy. It's just a short circuit. So I just click on that again, and that changes it into a short and preserves the SOT current that I need to calculate. Okay, so that's basically all I can do in the reconfiguration mode. So again, if I made a mistake, I would just click this restore circuit button here, but I, I don't need to do that now. So I'll just click done. And now um, this is actually going to be very simple to solve if you think about it, but in order to uh, make it easy to get into one of these uh, solution modes, I'm actually going to simplify the circuit first. So let's go into simplification mode. And one of the things we should observe here is that you may notice that the 4 ohm and the 8 ohm are in parallel because they're connected to the same two nodes, but actually it's not really the same two nodes, it's the same one node, right? Because that same wire goes around both sides. So these are actually shorted resistors. So there's no point in combining them in parallel. It's better just to get rid of them because a shorted resistor can't carry any current. Um, it doesn't have any voltage. It really plays no role as far as the rest of the circuit is concerned. It's what we call hinged. So I'm just going to basically just delete that resistor by clicking the delete key here. Uh, oh, I should have actually not selected this value, but uh, there. And uh, select that and just click delete. Okay, so actually I'm going to have to restore the circuit. It looks like by messing with that value that I got, I made it think that I was changing its value. So that's just a little quirk there. Um, so I'll just start over here and just delete it without changing the value this time. There we go. It thought I was combining them in parallel probably, so which I don't need to do. Okay, so now that's very simple. We can't simplify that anymore, so um, I'll just click done. And this is actually both a single node pair and a single loop uh, circuit. Um, so I think I'll treat it maybe as a single node pair. And we have to write an equation for that uh, SOT branch current, which is what we're after, the IL of infinity. So in terms of the node voltage here, um, that's going to be V1 divided by 7 ohms because that's the current uh, through this uh, basic steady state inductor has to be the same as that through the resistor. So I just enter 7 ohms there. And then the other thing I need to do is to enter a voltage constraint equation. It kind of gives me a big hint about that here um, because I have a voltage source and I'm doing what's similar to a nodal analysis. I just basically need to tell it what the V1 value is. And that's obvious because of the source. V1 is just going to be equal to 2 volts here. Notice we have to pay attention to the polarity here, but it is the plus side that's on the V1. Um, so that is going to be a plus rather than a minus. So we check that. And that's obviously all the equations we need. Now, I could have actually done it more simply. Um, I should point out it would have given me the option to just enter IL of infinity I did have a number where I could have just entered the amps directly. So if you want to just compute the 2 over 7 and enter that directly, you could have saved this step. Um, but I'm just doing it this way. So that uh, 2 7 I can do that in my calculator. And basically that will give me 0 0.2857 amperes. And again, I don't put the units here because they're already shown. And I'll just check that. And now, basically, it just adds that to the summary of things that we've done. And as you can see, there's only one thing left to do now, which is to find the Thevenin equivalent resistance seen from the terminals of the inductor. We need that, again, to get the time constant of the circuit so that we can formulate the final uh, transient current expression. 
So let's click on that. And again, it gives us instructions. And as always, it just tells us to reconfigure the circuit first and then do the simplify it and do the analysis as necessary. So we'll click the reconfigure circuit button. And so once again, I want to change that switch into the appropriate thing. And remember that we're interested in the time constant only for t greater than zero. We're not interested in the time constant for t less than zero, which would have involved a different value of R thevenin because that transient's already died out, right? We're looking at the one that's initiated by the switch, which closes at t equals zero. So therefore, that transient by definition has to happen, of course, after the effect must come after the cause. So it has to be for t greater than zero. It wouldn't make any sense to worry about what was happening for t less than zero here. So therefore, um, I'm analyzing it only at t greater than zero. It's important to understand that because sometimes people um, find the R thevenin the wrong value of time if they're not using something like Circuit Tutor. Um, and on an exam, for example, you'd have to remember that yourself. So it's, it's good to, to focus on that. So here, um, we're going to change that because this switch will be closed um, for t greater than zero. We'll change that to a short. And to find R thevenin, we're looking out from the terminals of the inductor. So what I'm going to do is select the inductor. I'm going to change it to a set of terminals from which we can measure that resistance. Now, one word of caution there is if there were a dependent source in this circuit, you might remember that to find the, uh, the, the Thevenin resistance looking into the terminals for a dependent source, we would have to use a test source. In other words, we'd have to put a voltage source here, maybe a one volt voltage source, and find its current. So give it a SOT current, or we could put a current source, say a one ampere current source, and a SOT voltage. But in this case, we don't need to do that, and it would certainly be more work to do that, so it's really not necessary. So instead, I'm just going to click on this terminals button here, and that basically will just label it as input terminals that I can look at. Now, normally that's all I can do in a uh, reconfiguration mode, but in this case, uh, for R Thevenin, it does allow you to kill sources, as it notes here as well. So just to save us going back into the circuit editor in the source killing mode, it allows us to do that now. So we know that to find our thevenin, it's very important to uh, kill all of the independent sources. And that means that we need to change the voltage source to a zero value source, in other words, to a short circuit. So I'll just click on the short button, which will do that. And then I'm now prepared to find our thevenin. So I'm done reconfiguring the circuit. Remember, you cannot simplify in this mode. You just have to go back into the circuit editor in a different mode so it knows what you're trying to do. Now, you could just, if you want to compute this value and just enter it, you can do that without even doing any more simplification. Um, I think just to illustrate, I'll go into the uh, circuit editor in simplification mode now. And if we look at this carefully, we notice that there are exactly two nodes in the circuit. One is this one at sort of the upper right. It's connected to one side of all three resistors. And then there's another node here that's like this that's connected to the other side of all three resistors. So these three resistors are clearly in parallel. They're connected to the same pair of nodes, and they have the same voltage. So I just need to combine them in parallel. And I can take my calculator and take 1 over 7 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 and uh, compute that, and then take the reciprocal of that result. And that will actually give me a value of 1.931, which remember has to always be less than any of the individual resistor values. That's one way of just checking that you didn't punch the wrong button for something or something like that in your calculator. So now to get rid of the other resistors, of course, I have to change them to open circuits, not shorts. If I was shorting them, then I would be basically be saying that R thevenin is zero, which clearly it is not here. So I just hit the delete key to delete that one, and I'll delete this one also. And that leaves the one resistor remaining. So I'm basically now um, I'll check the combination there, which is correct. And that's as much as I can do to simplify that, obviously. So I'll just say that I'm done. And now it's quite easy to just enter that value. I just have to basically type that uh, resistance value in here, 1.931. And that is correct. And like I said, I could have skipped that simplification step in this case. Um, but it's up to you whether or not you want to go into the circuit editor and do it there or not. OK, so now it's updated my uh, little progress uh, report here and basically says I've done essentially everything I need to do. So it's now automatically gone into the mode where I'm going to uh, do a circuit analysis 
to determine the final transient expression. And that's the last step um, in this problem. So now, since I have a transient current, there's three choices here. I can select transient voltage, current, or power. In this case, I want a current, so I just select that. And basically, there's not a lot of choice here. Um, I L of T is basically always going to have this form, and so there's only one term that it gives you, really. And we're going to need a uh, constant to go in there, um, and then a coefficient in front of an exponential. So you might remember that the exponential here is going to die at t equals infinity because e to the negative infinity is going to be zero. So this term is going to go away no matter what this coefficient is at infinity. So therefore, this is going to be the only thing that's left. So that must therefore be equal to the value of I L at t equals infinity. And I've already computed that. It's 0.2857 amperes. So I basically just need to enter that here, 0.2857. Now, um, the other thing we can say is that I L of zero, which is something else I've computed, or more precisely zero plus, because this is only valid technically for t greater than zero. Um, because they, right, kind of when the switch is storing, I mean, it actually would be valid at t equals to zero too, but it's, it's really derived for uh, zero plus. So um, that's gonna be zero amperes. And at zero, of course, e to the zero is gonna be one, so it would just be this number plus this number has to be equal to zero. Well, normally I'd have to get my calculator, but of course that's very easy here because it equals zero. So that's just gonna be negative 0.2857 and then I just, the last thing I need to do is to put in the time constant of the circuit, which is this third number. And remember that for an RL circuit, that's given by L over R. So I have six Henry's um, divided by uh, 1.931. So I'll just do that real quick on my calculator. And that works out to 3.107 seconds. And remember that um, Henry is also an ohm second or it's a uh, uh, Weber per ampere, which is another way of saying that, but it's an ohm second, and when you divide that by an ohm, of course, that gives you a second. So we do indeed have the correct units there. And so now I just check this equation, since I filled in all the blanks, and that is, in fact, uh, correct. And so now I'm basically uh, done with the problem. I just say no more equations. <laughs> And it does give me the opportunity to view a detailed solution. Now, I should point out that if you had ever gotten stuck at some point in this problem, you always have that option to give up, as you do throughout Circuit Tutor, uh, just by clicking the Give Up button, and it would have shown you um, the fully worked solution to this problem, and then just given you another problem that's similar but different. Um, and so you always have that option. Remember, there's no grade penalty ever for giving up. So you have the opportunity to do that, or you can just also look at examples um, before you even start, if you uh, wish to do that. So here it's offering me detailed explanation. I'm just gonna show you that. Um, this is similar to what the examples are. Uh, it does take uh, a little bit to generate this here because it has a lot of stuff to write on the screen, which is a little bit slow. So we just have to be patient while it's uh, writing its long-winded explanation here. Okay, and uh, so basically it shows you initially just sort of the general strategy is outlined here of how it's going to go about solving the problem. And then it shows you the solution at zero minus, um, basically explaining that it's changed the inductor to a short and the switch to uh, an open in this case. And then it shows you um, that those uh, elements can be removed. And it basically didn't simplify it quite as much as we did, but it did that and did the analysis to determine the zero current. And then it simplified it uh, again at infinity. It, it uh, changed the inductor to a short again and the switch to a short circuit now. And then basically went through the analysis here showing that those resistors could be removed, and again, doing something very similar to what we did. And then it shows you the calculation bar Thevenin, where we had killed the independent source and uh, closed the switch and replaced the inductor by that set of terminals. And then it just shows you combining those to get the final value. And then it shows all that being plugged in um, to the final circuit. So again, you don't have to view, of course, this, but it's there um, in case you're uncertain about any of the steps in the problem. So that concludes. Um, this example at level one. Thank you.